Hello everyone, my name's Colin. I want to tie a kite's pale watery today. Excuse me, hold on. <coughs> Bless me. Um, this is a pretty small fly. Um, the books that I had that labeled it labeled it fifteen, which I guess is sixteen would work. Um, requires a goose wing or shoulder feather, depending on where you get it from. If you know a good hunter that shoots, ask him for a couple feathers. Make sure they're really, really long in the fiber. Because this, I don't know if you can see that too well, but that is pretty long. I'm going to use that for the body. White thread or cream, yellow, whatever light colored thread you want. Then it requires a cream colored tail and a cream colored hackle. I do, I do not know if this requires to be doubled or not. But I've never seen this on the internet. It's not on YouTube or anything like that. It's called Kite's Pale Watery. So we're going to have a tail. A uh, body made out of this gray, you need many different things, this is, I think, can, can, Canadian goose. And, um, <laughs> sorry guys, someone texted me. Um, the pattern requires it to be a gray goose feather. So I don't know if that's quite the right color, right color, but that's going to the tying. Only tying a tail because I don't have everything situated very well I probably should have but for the sake of time and energy let's go and tie this medium done tail you can just use cream if that's what you prefer to use and I'm gonna go underneath the tail part I know you probably can't see the tail very well but yeah, maybe you can. Okay. Alright. So now it's tying the body, which is this gray goose feather. It's going to tie this at the tying point, which is where you first started your thread. Do a pinch loop. Wide it a little bit. I found this book that John Vineyard's R Reservoir and Lake book. You can find that on Amazon, Cocky Bundy Books, and so on. So, one, two. And I'm counter wrapping this body because David McPhail does that. I don't know if most people know that, but he. Might fall over on me again. Um, lost my train of thought. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, guys. I apologize. Um, let's see here. So here's the body. I kind of wrapped it meaning, oh, towards me. So like that. So you wrap it under it and then go like that. Um, don't necessarily have to do that, but I wrapped the thread backwards and forward on it to make it more durable. Um, let's go and get a hackle. If I can find one on my little Renzetti, mm. Renzetti vice. Sorry about that. Someone texting me. No, my battery life is low. Okay. Let's see here. That feather is a little bit too little. And the original pattern called for a size 15 hook, which I guess was a Limerick Bend hook. Because a lot of Limerick Bend hooks, those in those days were odd numbers. Sometimes you had an even number depending on the size of the gap. But, alright, let's go and wrap this. Oops. 
bunch of those flowers forward. One, two, three. Uh, I'm gonna go back. It's not sitting quite right up for me, guys. It's a pretty quick fly. Pretty quick. One, two. And I'm trying not to crowd the eye on this. One, two. Let's see, I can't sip out the hackle. Do some half hitches. This is supposed to be a dry fly. Because it wants to tie down the wrong side of the stem. So the hackles are pushing backwards, but that doesn't really matter. It's a genetic hackle. It's should be this cream, but that's all I had sitting on my bench was this feather from a Collins Hackle Farm barred cream neck. And I think that looks pretty good. It's not my best fly, but I don't want to see how fast I can make this video. Let's do it like this. There it is, guys. Kite's pale watery. Dry. Um, I do not know if it needs to be doubled or not, but I didn't say, so I would assume maybe not. Um, but thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. I'll try to make more videos as time allows. Alright guys, thanks.